the World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Superstars to take on Aldo Montoya and Barry Horowitz. Well, I'll tell you something, what a volatile weekend we've had. People are trying to track down Stone Cold Steve Austin, who has not been at any of his uh, wrestling uh, commitments. Austin was not in Richmond on Friday night. Austin was not in Landover at the U.S. Air Arena yesterday afternoon. And everybody is talking that Stone Cold is making his way towards Cincinnati, Ohio, where tomorrow night, live on Raw, we'll have a satellite in Cincinnati. And I hope we will not have the same problems we're having right now with our audio. But we'll have a, a satellite in Cincinnati tomorrow night to talk to Brian Pillman to see how he's doing since his uh, ankle reconstruction surgery. Stone Cold Steve Austin definitely destroying everything in his path. I can't see anybody slowing this guy down. It will be uh, Diesel starting out with Barry Horowitz. And uh, you got to be impressed with the athleticism of Diesel, a guy that's 6'8", uh, 6'9", six, six, somewhere in that neighborhood, around 300 pounds, tagging in the bad guy, Razor Ramon. And well, we'll see how they operate as a team here, Ross. You know, it's a whole different story when you're individual or you're in a team competition. Now, Survivor Series, you're going to be involved with four men on each team. I can't... <laughs> Speaking of Survivor Series, what about the team that I've got put together with Hunter Hearst Helmsley, the new Intercontinental Champion, Gold Dust, the King, Jerry Lawler, and Crush on the same team? Pretty fine team. We'll talk more about that in the broadcast as the bad guy easily manhandling uh, Barry Horowitz here thus far. But don't discount the ability and the athleticism of Barry Horowitz. McMahon asked Stone Cold why Gorilla Monsoon had punished him. Oh, what a question. Currently an outstanding athlete, uh, Double J. Match up between Stone Cold Steve Austin oh, oh, and Bret the Hitman Hart. I am going to enjoy that matchup more than I bet anybody in Madison Square Garden for the simple reason. Welcome back, everyone, to WWF Sunday Morning Superstars here on USA. The following time here comes Stone Cold Steve Austin. And who would want to get in the ring with Stone Cold after the rampage he's been on? I don't know anybody that would even sign a match with Stone Cold. Folks, uh, let's take you back to last week here on the broadcast. What a heinous attack by Stone Cold Steve uh -oh. Austin, destroying the ankle of a man that we uh -oh. thought was Austin's best friend, Brian Pillman. And as a result of that, uh, Brian has had to have reconstructive surgery on his ankle at Good Samaritan Hospital in Cincinnati. And now joining us live on the phone from Cincinnati is Brian Pillman. And Brian, uh, good morning to you. And first question, how are you feeling physically? I feel great. Uh, World-renowned orthopedist Dr. James Amos spent nearly six hours rebuilding my ankle. The prognosis is excellent despite what you hear from the... Uh, Pundits, critics, and the dirt sheets of wrestling. I'll be back, ready to go, early in '97. And uh, something I learned a long time ago: that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Brian Pillman, Mr. Perfect, here. I got a question for you. What do you think provoked Austin? You know, I thought you two were friends. Austin's always harbored a deep resentment of my success, ever since the day I left our tag team. See, my career flourished, but he languished. And mediocrity has quietly destroyed his self worth. Well, Brian, tomorrow night. Stunner. Bret Hart and 
Stone Cold two weeks from tonight on pay-per-view. Could this be the fate awaiting Bret the Hitman Hart in Madison Square Garden? The Hitman better be ready. I know he's always got himself prepared for battle, but this guy is on a roll. Steve Austin is on a roll. Look at the eyes of this guy. Steve Austin, great execution. Maybe perfect execution. Well, I would, if you want to go there, that's fine. That's getting the job done. I know that much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in just a few moments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in just a few moments, we're going back to our studios. Bret Hart is standing by live in Stanford, and we'll have a very in-depth, an up-close conversation with the legendary Bret the Hitman Hart, and that is next. All right, kid. WWF Superstars. This year, Milton Bradley Karate Fighters presents the WWF Survivor Series. It's live November 17th only on pay-per-view. And now joining us in our studios, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Brett the Hitman Hart. In my opinion, the greatest WWF champion of all time. And, and Brett, last night, George Foreman won another comeback fight and leads me into my first question. A lot of great athletes have made unsuccessful comebacks. Sugar Ray Leonard for one, Larry Holmes. Why do you think your comeback is going to be any different? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I really can't compare myself to anybody else. All I, can, all I can tell you is that at the end of my term as World Wrestling Federation champion, last year, a couple months before I even lost the title to Shawn Michaels, I could feel then that I wasn't 100%. That I was going in the ring, I was beat up, I felt like a basketball. I've been pounded into the ground too much. And that affected me, and I knew then, I said, you know, I'm not living up to people's expectations. And that's why I decided to take the time off. It wasn't because I was a sore loser, it was because I needed the time off. And I've recuperated. I have recovered, and I feel better than I've ever felt in my entire life. I am excellent right Brett, now. Brett, Mr. Perfect here, Brett. You know, I know you're no idiot. I've been in the ring with you many occasions. But I know one thing right now. You, how do you think you could take six months off and actually come back right in the, in the square circle up against a guy like Stone Cold Steve Austin and match up with him? Well, you know, I haven't been home just twiddling my thumbs, you know. I mean, I've been home uh, preparing, training. I've, uh, I haven't stopped, uh, you know, preparing for, for a time when I thought maybe I would come back. I didn't know if it'd be six months or a year or two years or maybe never. I had to take the time to see where I stood in the World Wrestling Federation. And, you know, Stone Cold, you know, he, I, I believe in my heart that he is the best wrestler in the WWF right now. And the reason I've accepted this match, I want to take this match, is because I want to go downhill from here on in. And if I can beat Stone Cold, and I will beat Stone Cold in Madison Square Garden, and, if, and when I do, the rest is easy pickings for the hit match. Well, well Brett, let me ask you this. Uh, last week here on the program, we saw... Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Pillman, you know, I'm, I've never really understood where Brian stood in the last four or five months, you know, whether it was with Owen or against, with or without, uh, you know, I don't know where Brian stood. But the fact is, Stone Cold kind of reminds me of a hyena, and hyenas eat their young, and that's kind of like what happened. And you know what, you just got to stand by and let it take its course. Listen, I don't hey, really worry about myself. Okay, hey, remember back in May, we were on the wrestle vessel, you had your children, you're all playing in the sand and the water and everything. What do you think your kids are going to be, you know, when they're watching this matchup against Stone Cold when he's whipping your ass? What do you think they're going to be thinking, your kids? Well, it's, it remains to be seen whether he's going to whip my ass, for starters. You know, what are they going to do when I'm whipping his ass? You know, my kids have been down this road with me a lot of times, and uh, whatever happens, happens. But, uh, you know, I think they understand the focus that I have, and they, I think everyone knows in my family that uh, it hasn't gone down real easy, the fact that I'm not the World Wrestling Federation champion anymore. And what happened at WrestleMania, you know, you swallow the medicine, but, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't an accepted understanding in my family that Shawn Michaels beat me or that anybody else beat me. Well, Brett, and let me ask you this question, if I may. Uh, this, excuse me, i got a couple of questions here. Who would you rather have to do the play-by-play -play at your match of Survivor Series, uh, Vince McMahon or your good old pal J.R.? Well, that's a really tough question, but uh, Jim, nobody calls it like you do. Thanks, Brad. I thought you might say that. I appreciate that. And let me ask you this. You say that Steve Austin is the best wrestler in the World Wrestling Federation. Some Shawn Michaels fans, some members of the clique may take that as an insult, a, a kind of a, a left-handed slap in the face to the WWF champion. Did you mean for it to come out that way when he said that Austin was the best and not Shawn Michaels? Absolutely. I hope he took it as a slap in the face. Shawn Michaels, you know, I, I believe in my heart he's a great, great wrestler. And he's done so, he, and he's been a great champion. But the fact is, 
he doesn't have that wrestling background that I have or even a Stone Cold Steve Austin has. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. He's not tough enough and he's not smart enough. He's a guy that makes mistakes. And when it comes right down to it, someone is going to beat Shawn Michaels. And whether it's me or Stone Cold or another wrestler in the World Wrestling Federation that's got a wrestling background, you're going to find out that Shawn Michaels... Well, he's just not good enough. You know, Brett, I've been back in the locker room areas, and a lot of the other wrestlers are uh, not too excited about you coming back because they know you're going to steal the spotlight. Good. The lone wolf's back. I'm back, and uh, let me say one thing. I feel better than ever. And the excellence of execution is looking forward to not only beating Steve Austin, but I will take on anybody and everybody until I achieve one thing. The World Wrestling Federation Championship belt, which in some ways I should never have lost in the first place. But, you know, leaving everything where it stands right now, I can't wait to step in the ring in Madison Square Garden. I got my fans backing me up 100%. I feel 100%. And I can't wait to rock Madison Square Garden in the Survivor Series and teach Stone Cold Steve Austin a wrestling lesson which will go down in the history of the World Wrestling Federation as my greatest Win. All right, Brett, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Look forward to seeing Brett Hart on Survivor Series weekend, and he'll be a part of the Hall of Fame. This young man is a franchise athlete here in the World Wrestling. Trying to get Crush back to the locker room area without another incident here. And folks, let's take you back. Right. Goldust for president. Well, the elections, of course, this Tuesday here in the good old U.S. Uh, Goldfront's been moving through the whole country here lately. It's a little chilly here. So headed to the. Well, he's headed to the hills. Well. What a volatile situation that will be settled at the Survivor Series. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you tomorrow night on Raw. Pillman. Pillman's neck has been put in that brace. Oh, come on.